Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be starting episode 20 in our Catacomb series, where we try to take you on some deep dive tutorials with specific D2R edits. And today's topic is going to be a mishmash of uh, hard-coded workarounds. Um, so these are features or mechanics that you may have thought uh, you're kind of locked out of, uh, but with some clever knowledge and tactics, you can actually get around these limits. Um, so with that said, as usual, if you guys are liking this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe, helps everybody out, and feel free to check out the video description for links to our website, Discord, and our Patreon. Uh, with all that out of the way, let's jump into the actual edits we'll be tackling today, as well as the files that you'll be needing. So for the very first edit, uh, we're going to be showing you how you can enable the sorceress's uh, telekinesis skill uh, to be used to also pick up armor and weapons. Um, so instead of just being limited to picking up gold or potions, uh, you can now pick up any item with this. And obviously if you want to assign that skill to all classes or something now as a, a new option, then you can do that kind of thing as well. Um, the second edit that we'll be talking about is how you can assign special stats uh, to miscellaneous items. Uh, so for our example, we'll be adding the replenish quantity stat uh, to arrows and bolts uh, so that if a player purchases it from the vendor, um, it automatically will replenish quantity um, and it acts like as a quality of life improvement for them. And then thirdly, uh, the last edit we'll be showing in the video uh, is how you can enable the gambling vendor uh, to gamble uh, charms and jewels or any miscellaneous item really um, in the uh, vendor. Sorry. Uh, so some of you may have tried to do this before and either the items just don't show up or you get a crash when it, uh, you know, you go to click it. Uh, this will show you how you can get all, all around all these workarounds. Um, Timestamps for these different edits will be shown in the video. Uh, so feel free to skip around to the actual edit that you care about. With all that explained, let's jump into our first edit, which is going to be modifying the Sorcerer's Telekinesis skill to pick up any item in the game. Uh, for that, we're actually just going to pull out item types.txt, and we're going to immediately hop over to the Blizzard data guide and explain uh, kind of how that works. Um, so you can feel free to pull up skills.txt if you need it as a reference, um, but the important thing to note is that for the serve do function of telekinesis, which controls uh, kind of the actual action that is performed, uh, we can see here, so do telekinesis. Um, I'm just going to read this description for you real quick, uh, just to illustrate how sometimes Blizzard will tell you the workaround themselves um, without explicitly telling you how to do it. So the description uh, states, if the target is a monster or player, then deal damage and use Calc 1 to control the knockback chance. If the target is an item, then ensure that the item type is a scroll, gold, or potion. So right there, they've essentially told us what we need to do to make this work for armors and weapons without actually, you know, meaning to or kind of spelling it out, just reading between the lines. So what we're going to do is open item types.txt and uh, the edit to enable this is going to actually be extremely simple. We're going to find our hard coded weapon and armor columns. So here's our first hard-coded uh, entry for weapons. Uh, this just, uh, again, signifies just kind of all weapons are this weapon type. And then the same thing for armor. Um, these assumed, or these are assumed in the files uh, that these uh, item types exist. Um, the reason this is important uh, for our benefit um, is that we can actually use that uh, to our advantage. Um, in the equiv1 column that it normally doesn't use because these are again just kind of hard-coded uh, assumptions in the game um, we can actually put in gold um, as our equiv1 um, so that's important because it's going to use this gold item type which we now know according to blizzard is one of the supported um, options for uh, telekinesis and what it specifically looks for in order to use um, but because we're using this on like the hard-coded uh, weapon or armor sections it's not really going to use that information um, so we're essentially getting all the benefits of this uh, equiv1 column without any of the actual 
actual kind of like drawbacks, if you will. So all we're going to do is add gold into both of those sections. And now telekinesis will work for any item in the game. Uh, and obviously you can fine tune that more if you'd like. Uh, but that's essentially how easy it is and all you need to do. Um, so just one more example again. Um, they won't always tell you exactly how to get around that thing. Um, but sometimes they're kind of blunt about it uh, as long as you just read it carefully. Um, for the next edit we're going to tackle, we're going to show you how you can add that special stat to arrows and bolts so they can, they can replenish quantity automatically. Uh, so for that, we're going to go ahead and pull up automagic.txt. And we're also going to grab miscellaneous.txt so we can add our new stat to the actual items. Um, to explain just kind of how this works, um, I am going to bring up armor.txt just as a reference file. So the important column to note uh, for now is just going to be this auto prefix column. At least in Diablo 2 uh, Resurrected version 2.6, this is going to be your column V. And we just want to scroll down until we find our first entry to make sense of how this works. So um, obviously we can use the data guide and you know you can uh, feel free to, to you know read these yourself. It'll tell you. Um, what these do. Um, however, this is going to essentially just automatically assign a special stat to the specific items you designate it for. Um, and we can see how that works using, uh, for example, these paladin shields and these necro shields. Uh, we can see that for the auto prefix column, they get assigned a value of 304 and 305 respectively. And to understand what that translates to, we'll now open automagic.txt. And now the uh, column I'd like to focus your attention on is the group column. Um, if we scroll in here, we can see that uh, we have an entry for 304 and 305, uh, just like we saw in armor.txt, and this is what controls what stats are applied to those items. Um, so now we can start to understand uh, that there's a reason uh, all paladin shields always seem to come with all resistances or damage percent, etc. Um, it's because they're uh, given this auto prefix and they're assigned this group automatically. Uh, now, within a group, only one stat may be chosen. So you're only going to get one of these, uh, you know, depending on RNG and your level and things like that. Um, but it's always going to choose at least something from this group because it was assigned it through that auto prefix. Um, again, same thing applies for necromancer shields. That's why you're always going to see poison damage on them. They're assigned that with an automatic prefix. So, one thing that we can do is add our own prefix um, so that we can generate uh, the stat we want on the item we want. Um, so, let's go ahead and we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll clone that, I guess, sorry. Um, so, we'll just clone this and edit it as we want. We're going to call it replenishing because, as usual, we're very creative here. Um, and the only things we really care about are just kind of making things match how we like. We'll set it to level one. Um, we do need to change the group. So we're going to give it a new group so it's not associated with uh, any others. And we know for sure it's getting this item. And then for the actual code we want to use, um, I already know the code is like a rep-quant. Uh, but I want to show you guys just how you can quickly find that kind of stuff out for yourself. Um, the easiest method is going to be pulling up properties.txt and using the tooltip column um, so we can do just a search for replenish quantity and we won't find anything because it's probably something slightly different so we'll just do replenish and there we go no idea why i didn't find it anyways um, so we can see that uh, the property rep dash quant controls the stat item replenish quantity and obviously that tooltip just helps uh, make it easier for us to find the uh, exact stat um, so anyways, we want to use rep-quant as our mod1 code. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste that in. And for this specific stat, we don't actually use a min and a max value. We're just in the parameter field going to set 
um, basically like the frame delay for when this generates. Um, I believe the hard-coded limit for this is uh, replenish one every four seconds um, with 25 frames a second. Uh, that works out to like 100 frames. So um, feel free to adjust that as you want or use whatever stat you want. Obviously, this is just kind of a demo purposes. Um, the last thing we need to do, uh, we don't care about giving it a special color, uh, but we do want to assign it to the proper item type. Again, this is going to be used for errors or bolts, so we're going to give it the miscellaneous item type, um, and if you want to fine-tune that further, feel free. Um, so we're all set with our new replenish kind of auto stat, um, so we're going to go ahead and save that. So just like you saw in armor.txt, now what we need to do is we need to assign uh, that auto prefix in miscellaneous.txt. Um, so let me go ahead. We're going to close some of this junk out here. All right. Um, and uh, so let me lock these up. And we just need to take a look for that auto prefix column. And you might notice that, uh, I know I may be scoring a little fast, but uh, that auto prefix column doesn't exist in the miscellaneous.txt file. It's only available in the armor.txt and weapons.txt files. Um, so you may wonder how you can uh, use that function if it just plain doesn't exist in the file. Um, and the secret to know is that uh, armor, weapon, and miscellaneous.txt are all actually one file as far as Diablo 2 is concerned. Uh, when you launch the game at runtime, it'll combine them all into a single bin. Uh, we're just going to call it AMW for armor, miscellaneous, weapons. Uh, we'll just call it AMW.bin for argument's sake. Um, but uh, it combines them all together together. Uh, during that process. And what that means is that for any column that's in one of those files, that column is technically in all of those files. Um, however, in .text, it just doesn't show it like that. Um, so we can, once more, use that knowledge to our advantage, and we can simply copy that column into miscellaneous.txt without worrying about breaking anything, because again, it is technically all the same file. Um, now, me personally, uh, I'm going to add it after the name string column. I like to keep them somewhat together uh, how they were in the other files, just for my own uh, organization. Um, however, it's not strictly needed. Uh, you can add it at the end of the file if you wanted to. Um, you know, again, this is just my own kind of personal preference. Um, so once more, just going to add it after this name string column. So we're going to go up here. We're going to go to insert column. And uh, let me unlock that, and we'll paste that in. So we've now added an auto prefix column into the miscellaneous.txt file. And now, just like we did in uh, armor.txt, we can specify our own auto prefix to use. Uh, so we've set our auto prefix to 306, just like uh, that was in our auto magic.txt file. And we've now uh, added that replenish quantity stat to miscellaneous items uh, that was previously was not possible before. Now, following the same train of thought, um, we're going to also use this to enable gambling miscellaneous items. Um, if you've ever tried to gamble miscellaneous items before in your mod, uh, you may have either experienced game crashes when you click the gamble option, um, or it just plain doesn't show your items, things like that. Um, we're going to show you once more how you can get around that limit um, by uh, editing some, some columns and making some adjustments here. So the reason uh, you will get a game crash when you go to gamble those options is because gambling expects there to be item rarities. Um, so your normal, exceptional, elite item rarities, um, those are factored in to the gambling equations uh, for your overall you know, chance to get each type and things like that. Um, however, as you're probably aware, miscellaneous items don't have item rarities. There is no elite version of a small charm. A small charm is just a small charm. Um, so what we can do is essentially mimic uh, that behavior by copying those columns from our armor.txt file. 
Um, so just like we did before, we're going to head over to the norm code, uber code, and ultra code columns. These again control normal, exceptional, and elite quality versions of the items. And we're going to insert these three rows. Uh, once more, we see it after the auto prefix column. So that's where I'm personally going to add these. But feel free to add them at the end of the file or something if you want. So we're going to toss our three uh, you know, new columns in there. Um, but one thing that's important is we don't actually want, in our case, um, small charms to have different item rarities. We don't want an exceptional version of a small charm or something like that. So what we're going to do is copy that base item code into all three columns. Um, so the easiest way to do that is we're just going to lock the top row. We're going to select that code column. We're going to do a copy. And then we're just going to paste that in there. So what we've done here is we've forced the game to think uh, that miscellaneous items now do have different item rarities. However, because they're all using the same exact item code, there is no actual item rarity switching or different levels. Um, so once more, um, we've kind of taken the best of both worlds. We've left miscellaneous items structured exactly how we wanted, but we've also tricked the game into uh, basically not breaking uh, when it goes to decide which quality to roll. So with that said, um, we've carried out all our edits that we're trying to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and toss up the launcher. We're going to get that game going, and we're going to make sure everything's still working as it should. Uh, so just bear with me here as everything loads up. And I guess we'll start off. We'll just uh, head over to uh, Charcy and make sure that our bows and or our airs and bolts uh, now replenish quantity automatically. And great. So we can see that replenish quantity stat is now added to them. Uh, so all that new auto prefix column and stuff we manually added has taken effect. If we look at something like telekinesis, let's see here. And I'm going to go ahead and drop my staff on the ground. And we can see now that telekinesis will pick it up. So it's no longer limited to, um, you know, scrolls and gold and things like that. Um, you can use it to pick up whatever you'd like. Um, as usual, it'll still interact with things. So you can still access your waypoints or portals or anything like that. We've just expanded it to also pick up weapons and armor now. Um, and I actually did forget one step on you. So we did make it uh, possible to gamble. Um, miscellaneous items, uh, but I forgot to add the items themselves to the gambler. So apologize for that. Just uh, had a, a blonde moment there on you for a second. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, all we need to do for that is pull out gamble.txt. Um, this, so this is going to be a real simple edit. We're just going to scroll down to the bottom. The code column is the item code uh, that it should spawn. Um, so let me just go ahead and add some rows here. Uh, we'll just call this one charm, and we'll do CM1. Uh, we'll do some autofill, because three characters are far too much to type. All right, so now it's going to spawn a small, large, and grand charm as a gamble option as well. So sorry about that. I uh, usually always forget one thing, it seems. But we've already seen the other two edits take effect, so we're just going to hop over to the Gamble Vendor and uh, hit refresh a couple times, and we should see our new charms available as Gamble options as well. And so there we go. We can see a large charm up here. And you can see I can gamble that just like normal. It'll roll all its random stats just like it normally would. And the grand charm and the small charm will function the exact same. So, um, you know, if you wanted your players to be able to maybe get skillers and stuff from gambling or whatever, you can enable all that kind of stuff. Let's see if I can get a small charm real quick just to show them all working. Uh, so small charms will appear with rings and amulets over here. Uh, 
uh, that's just a hard-coded thing based on item size and stuff. But now we can see that you can gamble miscellaneous items as well. And once more, if you felt like doing this for, for jewels or some custom item or such, uh, you can enable all that now. Um, so I hope this has been a good kind of guide and just overall lesson of while there's a lot of hard-coded things, there's also a lot of clever workarounds you can utilize. Um, so just feel free to ask if you guys need any help. Check out our modding Discord. And thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Have a great day. Bye.